Hey, it's James here from goodguitarist.com and today I'm going to show you how to get the most out of the concept of keys and how it all applies to guitar in like a really hands-on way. You know, I want to make it clear from the very beginning that while keys can be this like massive academic topic, which includes key signatures and writing out all the notes on the staff and all that stuff, it doesn't have to be that way. You know, we can learn about it in a really useful way that you're going to be able to apply to guitar quickly and easily. I'm going to show you how to find the key and then I'm going to show you the easiest keys on guitar that most songs use and you'll start being able to understand why your favorite songs use certain chords. You know, you're going to realize like, oh, this song here and, and that song, they have the same chord progression. They're just in different keys, you know, and you're going to be able to use that information to kind of learn songs more quickly, you know, and like multiply what you already know. And over time, you'll make a ton of little realizations like that. And it'll add up to you really like getting music theory. Because the whole point of learning theory, in my opinion, is to make life easier for you. So that's the angle that we're coming from today. Now, before I reveal my simple method for understanding keys on guitar, if you're interested in going further with this sort of thing, I have a course, Music Theory 101, that teaches hands-on theory and the academic stuff. So it's the best of both worlds. There's a link in the corner. We'll talk more about it at the end of this lesson. So here's how a musician thinks about keys. Key implies two things. One, a scale that you can use to create melodies in that particular key. And two, a set of chords that you can use to create chord progressions in that same particular key. So for example, this is the key of C. We have seven notes starting at C. We go all the way up, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And if you're not familiar, the musical alphabet, once you get to G, you go right back to A. And you can just repeat it over and over again. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, and it keeps going. And those are the notes. We can make a melody using those notes. You know, and your melody that you make using those notes is gonna be in the key of C. And you know, and that melody would usually be accompanied by some chords and that'll give you a whole song. And as far as the chords are concerned, we just take those exact same notes. We number them starting at one. You know, C is the key. The key gets to be number one. Uh, other people will call it the tonic. That's like the technical word for it. You know, so our tonic, the key is number one. And then we just number the rest of them. You know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The one, four, and five, those are major chords. The two, three, and six, are minor chords. So you just put like a little M beside it. And then the seven is diminished. We'll ignore that seven for a minute. Uh, we basically end up with three major chords and three minor chords within each key. And when it comes to creating chord progressions, you just use them in any order you want for as long as you want, whatever, you know, finger picking pattern, whatever you want to do. And then you can sing notes from the scale and it'll sound great together no matter what. You know, I'm just going to make something up like just... It's like the Scooby-Doo theme song. <laughs> so you could just be like C, D minor, G, C, you know? And then you just use those notes from the key of C and you're making a song in the key of C. And taking that a step further, if you're building like cool sounding chords, you basically just take any of those basic chord shapes and then you add other notes from that scale and it'll color up the chords and make them sound kind of cool. You know, like if you take a C chord and then you add the note D, which is in the C scale, it's in the key of C, creates this cool like airy sound. It's called a C add nine chord, but chord theory is like its own thing. So, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it at that. But all I want you to take from this is we establish our key and that gives us access to all the notes and all the chords that we need, not only to create chord progressions or basically write songs, but also to analyze other songs and figure out why we like them, you know, what makes them so good or appealing to our ears. And then we absorb that information into our own playing 
and we have more tools in our toolbox. Now, before I show you all the keys and you know all that stuff, we gotta figure out how to find the key. And I wanna show you like a more technical way to do it and then also a more uh, ear-based way, you know, like kind of just feeling it. And let's actually start with the feeling it way. When we're listening to music, deep down, we all have this ability to kind of hear where the song wants to go. You know, that's just how music works. You know, it creates tension. And we're like traveling around the key and then we eventually release it and come back to the tonal center, you know, which is the one chord, it's the key. And what's cool is that music affects us that way, you know, using tension and release. And I know a lot of people think that they don't have a good ear, like they're either tone deaf or whatever, you know. But the truth is, if music affects you, like if you listen to music and it does something to you and you like it, that means that you have the ability to hear it or else music wouldn't affect you. So keep that in mind if you're maybe not confident in your ear. It is something that you can develop if you like music. So here's how the process goes. You're listening to something and like I said, we're just going to feel it, right? You kind of think like, what note does this all kind of come back to? What does this all boil down to? And some people, they can get it right away. You know, and some people, it takes them a while to develop this skill. But you just have to try it. Just practice it going, mm, no, that's not a good note. Uh, hum it out and eventually you find the note and you're like that's got to be the key you know so I, I just hum until something feels like it works you know like the tension is released like if you're in a room with a ton of people and everybody started humming you would all eventually come down to the exact same note that's just how people are we love to be harmonious and for everything to kind of come together, you know? So you just have to trust that that's gonna happen the more you practice it. You know, you just listen to a song and you kind of hum. Mm -hmm. Until something feels like home, it feels really, mm -hmm. really resolves. And then you keep humming that note. Mm -hmm. And then you poke around on the thickest string till you find a note that matches. Hmm. And you know that hmm, that matches to my ear. You know, this is a muscle. You got to practice it. You're going to get better simply by trying. You know, you're not going to get it right right away. And don't let that discourage you. You know, because if you don't try, you're never going to get it. You know, you have to keep trying. You have to keep failing till you succeed. And everybody does get it. Believe me. If you keep trying, everybody does get it. Just like a couple minutes a day. That's literally all it takes. Anyways, we find the note that matches. And then as far as figuring out what note that is, I have a, um, a lesson that teaches you how to map out all the notes on every string on guitar. That's the note C. We're in the key of C. Anyways, another way to figure out the key of the song is to just look at the song. It usually starts and ends on the key. Most songs do this. You know, like Lay Down Sally by Eric Clapton. You start off playing an A chord. The song ends on an A chord. The song's in the key of A. You know, uh, Good Riddance, Time of Your Life by Green Day. You start off on a G chord. The song ends on a G. It's in the key of G. You know, you could even literally type what song is Good Riddance in on Google and it'll tell you it's in the key of G. Like it's, you know, that's another way of figuring it out. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's cool to practice using your ear, but that's a good way too. Anyways, once you have that, you know, once you picked a key, you need to know how to generate all the information in that key. You know, what the scale is and what the chords are. So let's actually take uh, Time of Your Life by Green Day, Good Riddance, which is in the key of G. We need to make a G scale, a G major scale. So we start with the letter G and we just go through the musical alphabet. G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You know, we start on G, we end on G. And then we have to figure out if there's any sharps or flats. And for that, I just use the circle of fifths. Uh, I'm going to put this in my ebook and you can just print it off. I'll, I'll put a link in the corner for it. And it just tells you what's in every key. In my theory course, we obviously learn exactly how to find everything and like all of that. But like I said, you know, I'm going to make a bunch more lessons and put them up on YouTube to explain all this stuff because it's like a rabbit hole. Regardless, you look on the circle of fifths, 
G has one sharp. We look at our little list of sharps and flats. If you have one sharp, it's got to be F sharp. So G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. And that is the G major scale. We can number them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then one. One, four, five, our major. Two, three, six, our minor. The seven chord is diminished. There you go. Those are all the chords. So that's all the information that the key of G can give us. Then we take a look at our song, A Time of Your Life. It uses G, C, D, and E minor. G is the one chord, C is four, D is five, E minor is six. So it uses the one, four, five, and six chords. And that is universal information. You can just, you know, you'll hear musicians talking and they'll just be like, yeah, yeah, this song's like one, five, six, four. You know, that's like the classic progression. One, five, six, four. You know, like Country Roads, When I Come Around, bajillion songs. We could take that and apply it to another key. So let's do that. Let's take the key of E. We start off with the letter E. And we just write out our musical alphabet from E up to the next E. E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. Now we refer to our circle of fifths, which is the ultimate reference for keys. We see that E has four sharps. We look at our list of sharps. There's four sharps right there. So E is going to have those four sharp notes. We sharpen E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D sharp, and now we have the key of E major. We want to figure out the chords. One, four, five, our major. Two, three, six, our minor. The seven is diminished, and that's the key of E. And we could take that one, four, five, six, or whatever we were using in the key of G, and we can just figure out what those are in the key of E. And now we've turned that song into the key of E. Another turning point, fork stuck in the road. You know, and we've changed keys, and that's one of the biggest powers of keys and, and music theory and all that. So at this point, I think we've definitely gone over enough to start building our understanding of keys. When it comes to putting this all together, first, I recommend you do take a couple minutes every day to just hum along to a song and try to figure out what the key is by ear. You know, it may seem futile, but it actually is going to build up your ear like a muscle in a really simple way. And then as far as, uh, you know, using the key, I just want to sum it all up. You pick a key kind of arbitrarily. You know, you look up what key is Lay Down Sally in. It's in the key of A, right? And then you write out your letters, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. And then you figure out which ones are going to be sharp or flat using that circle of fifths thing from my free ebook. Um, I There is, you know, a way to figure this out without the chart. But once again, that's like a tangent, you know, we'll have to learn so many little things and then it all comes together. That's kind of how music theory works. Every individual thing is simple enough. And then when you put it all together, it creates this much more complex picture. And that's why, you know, you might see somebody who like knows their theory and you think they're like a wizard, but in reality, they just know like 50 really simple things. And then when you put those simple things together, you can make some really complicated stuff. Kind of like, you know, the letters of the alphabet, but, uh, you know, somebody can put those letters together and they can write like a PhD dissertation, you know, so it's there's you can do a lot with with very little. And um, if you're interested in learning more, because, you know, we kind of just scratch the surface here. But if you want to know where all these scales come from and how all that works, I would love to teach you the mechanics of music theory in a really hands on way, like on the guitar. So you can actually use the stuff, you know, when you show up at a jam or whatever. I'll uh, I put that all in my music theory course and I'll just put a link in the corner if you are interested in learning. You know, we, we kind of do it in the hands on way and then we do all the same stuff, but in the academic way. So if you want to learn how to write all the notes on the page and do all that stuff, I do have a music degree, believe it or not. So, you know, I've uh, put it together in like a really simple course that teaches you everything and you're, you're welcome to check that out. Otherwise, please let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below. I'm going to make more theory lessons here on YouTube to fill in the gaps, but there's only so much that I can do on YouTube because YouTube's like, watch this video, then watch this, and then watch something about cooking and then da da da. Whereas, you know, for learning theory, it's nice to like learn it all in order. That's what I made the course for. Either way, you know, uh, take a moment if you, if you do enjoy learning guitar with me, just take a moment to hit the subscribe button, the bell icon and all that stuff. It helps put my lessons out there and, uh, you know, help more people learn guitar. Otherwise have a fun time practicing and I'll see you soon.